Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels, and this time, the parable of the sheep and the goats, which is found in the Gospel of Matthew. It's a long parable, using animals as symbols for different kinds of people, so let's take a look. And when the Son of Man shall come in his majesty, and all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the seat of his majesty, and all nations shall be gathered together before him, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd separateth the sheep from the goats. Matthew twenty five thirty one to 32 Sheep and goats are used as examples of different kinds of people here because they were animals that were commonly raised in and around ancient Jerusalem, and their behavior was pretty well understood. Sheep are gentle, grazing animals which tend to spend a while in a single group and are fairly easily directed as a herd, following pretty much any other animal that leads them or seems to know where it's going. However, they're not very bright. Goats, by contrast, are stubborn, bold, and willful creatures, intelligent and eager to head off in new directions with confidence. But because of this, they can sometimes get sheep in trouble if one intrudes into a herd of sheep, then takes off. A fair number of sheep might follow that goat away from the rest of the herd. This animal analogy seems to be a reference to the difference between people who faithfully obey the will of God, the shepherd, and stay on the path he's laid out for them, versus those whose charisma and overconfidence cause them to go astray, leading others astray behind them. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say to them that shall be on his right hand, Come, Come ye blessed, ye blessed of my father, my father possess, possess you the kingdom prepared, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 33-34 the sheep are implied to be the blessed ones because they followed the path that was laid out for them. Obedience to God is often more meritorious than brains. We also see clearly here that the kingdom of heaven was prepared for us before we were even born. We just have to be prepared for it. For I was hungry, and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you covered me. Sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew 25, 35-36 I can't help but notice that these two verses outline, in brief, nearly every corporal work of mercy, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, harboring the harborless, visiting the sick, and ransoming captives, though it doesn't say the man in prison was ransomed exactly, it's curious that it's mentioned. The only corporal work of mercy left out is burying the dead, and that could just be because the dead probably perceive the act of mercy less than the living do. In any case, this is the correct path that God sets for good people to walk, offering help to those who need it. Then shall the just answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and feed thee, thirsty and gave thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and covered thee? Or when did we see thee sick or in prison and came to thee? Matthew twenty five thirty seven to thirty nine. Probably not all of them will ask these questions, since some will probably have heard this parable and understand what's meant by that statement. And the king, answering, shall say to them, Amen, Amen I, say I say to you, as long as you did it to one of these my least brethren, brethren, you did it to me. Matthew twenty five forty. By showing mercy to those who are in need and who can't help themselves, we also show mercy to Jesus as well. This is the central theme of the parable. He took their suffering upon himself on the cross, so by relieving the suffering of others, we, to a degree, relieve some of the suffering of Jesus. The less hurt that people cause to one another, the less hurt is suffered by our Lord. Then he shall say to them also, that shall be on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire which was prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew twenty five forty one. Notice that God doesn't say that the everlasting fire was meant for the goats. It wasn't. They were meant to have a share in heavenly glory, but because of their behavior they've chosen not to embrace that fate. For I was hungry, and you gave me not to eat. I was, I was thirsty, thirsty, and you gave, gave me, me not, not to drink. drink. I, was I was a stranger, stranger and you and took me not in. in. Naked, Naked, and you, and you covered, covered me not. not. Sick, Sick, and in, in prison, prison, and you did not, not visit me. Matthew twenty-five, forty-two to 43 
Again, the same works of mercy are listed, except that the goats headed off to do their own thing and refused to help others when opportunities arose. Jesus isn't merely saying that some people lacked food and blaming the goats for those people not having food. If he were, he would have to blame the sheep for that too, since either the sheep or goats could have helped the hungry people. What he's saying is that the opportunity to help others in need was given to both sheep and goats, but the sheep responded to it, while the goats rejected the opportunity to do so. Then they also shall answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to thee? Matthew twenty five forty four. The goats are much less likely to have heard this parable before. Then he shall answer them, saying, Amen, Amen I, say I say to you, to you as long as you did it not to one of these leaks, neither did you do it to me. Matthew 25.45 Again, doing it not means that they saw or knew someone was in need and chose not to act. If someone is starving but you never see them or hear about them, you can hardly be blamed for failing to help them. Even the sheep did that. The goats are blamed for the good that they refused to do, not merely the good that they failed to do through no fault of their own. And these shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into life everlasting. Matthew twenty-five forty-six. These being the goats, they will suffer the consequences of their refusal to relieve suffering and do good for others. For the good sheep will be rewarded forever for the good that they chose to do. And ultimately, that's the whole point, isn't it? What is there to live for if not that? Heaven provides us with hope for future prospects, a purpose for the life we currently live, and it provides adequate justification for the sacrifices that we make in our lives here on earth. Any bad thing that ends can be lived through, and so long as man is mortal and faithful to God, all bad things for him must come to an end. Next, the children in the marketplace. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.